My name is Sam Pazuki. I'm the managing director and CEO of Matador Mining, ASX listed issuer, symbol MZZ. I'm an engineer by background with a master's in finance, having spent prim my primary career with three companies in the oil and gas sector, mining sector, uh, working focus, focus mainly in, in the commercial side of, of each of these businesses, as well as uh, leading them through major transformations in the organization. Brilliant. Sam, lovely to meet you. Um, we normally speak with Ian. Um, what, what have you done, Ian Murray? What have you done with him? Now, Ian is still an integral part of uh, Matador. Uh, the board last year began a recruitment process to look for a Toronto-based uh, chief executive officer. Um, I was approached by a headhunter they had hired, went through that process with Ian and the board, um, became the successful candidate through that process. Ian is still very much involved with the company. He, uh, when I was When I joined on May 1st, and appointed to the board as managing director, Ian stepped down to um, to non-exec chairman from exec chair, and then just yesterday he's uh, he's stepped down to non-exec director. While Justin Osborne, who's been on the board for the last couple of years with Ian, has has moved into the non-executive chairman role. So both Ian, Justin, and Nikki Atchett Bell are still very much involved with the board. Gotcha. Okay, fine. Understood. Um, so you, yeah, you, you give us a little bit about your background and engineer of three, three previous companies. Have you been a CEO of a public company before? No, this is the first time that I've, I've stepped into a CEO role. Uh, before at Matador, I was with Oceana Gold, dual-listed issuer, um, multinational gold producer. Uh, I was in capital markets uh, for them, running investor relations, uh, strategy, and M&A. Um, so that was a 10 year career with, uh, with, with Oceana Gold. Prior to that, I had a stint with EY as a consultant working on, um, big projects, helping BHP, for example, through the, uh, through the Janssen project in Canada. Uh, and then prior to that, uh, I was with, uh, I believe it's Canada's third largest corporation called Enbridge, which is an oil and gas pipeline company, one of the largest in the world and, uh, and sort of started my career there and grew with them before moving on. Okay, wow, Jansen, that, that must have been fascinating. Um, very different from what you're uh, what you're going to be doing now. Um, tell me, what have you been tasked to do? Given if Ian's stepping back like that, um, are you fixing problems that you've inherited? Or are you changing strategy? Or are you trying to, I don't know, implement some kind of growth strategy? Because it's a difficult difficult time at the moment. It's difficult to know how to react to the market and and the opportunity ahead of you. So, what, what's the plan? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a challenging market, that's for sure. I mean, we just came through an equity raise, which um, which was successful, but we and we it was successful in a market like today, um, with where there's so much volatility, and uncertainty going forward. I was tasked to to build on the foundation that we currently have. Uh, I'm fortunate to to have the board that we we have, the quality of the board, uh, the quality of the people that we've got within the organization. And we're in a jurisdiction that is emerging as as a new uh, mining jurisdiction. One that hasn't seen a lot of investment historically, uh, only seeing investment in the last uh, four or five years. And that's just ramping up. It's it's a top tier jurisdiction and it's in Canada. You, you wonder, you know, Canada is a, is a large mining country. Uh, there's been a lot of history, rich history of mining in, in Canada, a lot of investments in, in different provinces. But Newfoundland, which is where we are, has not seen a lot of that investment. So it's it's a brand new jurisdiction. I consider it the final frontier for top tier jurisdictions around the world for mining. And we're sitting on one of the largest tenement packages on a multi-million ounce gold structure. Uh, we're only one of four companies with a gold mineral resource. Uh, so we already have a head start. So I'm coming in here with a pretty solid foundation and really looking at uh, what we can do next to unlock shareholder value. Okay, okay. a bunch of cliches in there. So I, I, I want to kind of break that down. So let, let's, let's start with build on the foundations. Um, so remind me again what, what that foundation looks like? Yeah, the foundation are the people that we've got, uh, the tenement package along, again, this multi-million ounce gold structure. And we, we've got a head start in terms of having a mineral resource. Uh, we've got 840,000 ounces of gold at uh, two grams. All, most of that resource, 96% of it is less than 200 meters. So it's, it's open pitable, uh, which makes it one of the highest grade open pitable, uh, opportunities in a top tier jurisdiction. So that's what I mean by, by having a solid foundation from, from which we can grow from. Right. Okay. And then you're going to need, um, a plan and some money to build on that, right? So um, two gram open pitable, Newfoundland, yeah, I get it, so it's, it's a new frontier. 
Um, I think it's the second time I've heard that today. You know, there, there, there are lots of new frontiers. It's more a case of what, what you do while you're there. So um, last year, we saw a flurry of activity in, um, around Newfoundland. People got very, very excited. There's a lot of money came into the space. Um, and then a lot of companies have gone quiet. So what? how are you set up for success here? You know, why is it going to work? Yeah, I mean, there's always a fair degree of risk when it comes to junior the junior exploration world. Um, what um, what sort of attracted me to the Matador story, why I left it, you know, the comfort of Oceana Gold and having been there for 10 years is is the prospectivity of, of the island, but prospectivity of where we are specifically uh, on the island. There are two main gold structures. Uh, one's the Cape Ray Shear. We've got 120 kilometers of continuous strike on the Cape Ray Shear. That same structure hosts Marathon Gold, which is the most advanced project on the island. It currently hosts 5.1 million ounces, and that's what we're looking to replicate. Yes, good, um, good company. You know, yeah, an absolute good company. They're very close to getting their federal permit and putting a shovel on the ground. So they're well ahead of the, the curve in terms of uh, the, the life cycle of their their business, and and we're not too far behind them. And so we, we're really looking for multi-million ounce deposits like what Marathon has. Uh, we do believe that they can't, their, their deposits aren't the only ones on this structure. Uh, and that in itself is an opportunity. That's one of the big reasons why I moved over from Oceanago to, um, to Matador. I've mentioned there's two major gold structures. The other one is called Her the Hermitage Flexure. And we, we also have a pretty exciting opportunity on that structure, which currently hosts Newfound Gold, which has the largest market cap on the island. Uh, no resource, but has some of the, the the best drill intercepts that we've seen on the island. And we've got 27 kilometers of continuous strike uh, on that hermitage flexure, which we're feeling pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where have we found gold um, and their market cap? Um, so as I mentioned, it's going to take money to deliver a plan. So you, you want to replicate, um, obviously, what's going on at Marathon, good, good outfit, you know, 5 million ounces, no one can complain about that, 1.7 um, grams per ton. Um, you've raised some money recently, not, not, not a whole bunch of money, but an, an, enough to do what with? Yeah, again, in the backdrop of what's going on in the broader market, it, I would characterize it as a successful raise. Uh, we've, we've brought in 5 million uh, Australian dollars um, as, as part of a hard, hard dollar and flow through raise. We've got a share purchase plan currently on, ongoing to allow retail investors to participate. And it's, it is you know, $5 million that allows us to do quite a bit. Uh, I've just pivoted the strategy and when I joined, moving away from what I call the brownfields exploration, where the resource is, to really test the strike potential that we've got on the Cape Race here. Uh, we did some, um, the, the company had done some work on um, on a new area called Malachite, which is 15 kilometers by four kilometers. And that's a larger footprint than Valentine Lake, which hosts Marathon Gold's 5.1 million ounces. It's it's oozing gold in soils. And, and one of the big drivers for me to pivot strategy so that we can go and do some follow-up work, which is happening right now, uh, ahead of what I'm hoping is a drill program that will start before the end of the Canadian summer. Right. Okay. And so why is that? Why is this pivot better for the company than the previous strategy that um, Ian was pursuing? Yeah, it's not a question of whether it's better or not. Uh, the Brownfields uh, work that the company had been doing was was drilling around that, that resource that's there. And that drilling was successful. Uh, that drilling will continue to be successful uh, when we go back to it uh, and will incrementally grow their resource. Well, what I believe is going to move the dial for shareholders is to make multi-million ounce discoveries, not just incrementally grow, grow a resource. It's to really go out there in elephant country and look for elephants. And we believe that the opportunities do exist along the belt, but we don't know unless we go in and test it. There's no point in having 120 kilometers of continuous strike and just talk about having it. It's, it's, it's really going out there and testing the, the potential. There has been no drilling at all. Uh, beyond the, the brownfields area that, that we've been drilling. So that that's approximately uh, just under uh, 90 kilometers of 120 kilometers that's never seen a drill hole. Uh, so that in itself is an opportunity. Plus, I mentioned the opportunity at Hermitage. Right. And so, so I should say um, the SPP, which you mentioned, um, if, if you, a share purchase plan, that's only available to the Aussies and the Kiwis, right? Um, and you're looking to raise, like, what, another million or so bucks? What, what, 
That's, that's right. It's available to Australian and, and uh, Kiwi share, yeah. uh, shareholders, and uh, it's it's capped at a million dollars. So we we, we, we talk about it on our on our um, our uh, private investment platform. I kind of forget that North America may not be aware of some of these terms. So um, unfortunately, North Americans can't come into that um, round. Um, so so back back to what you're going to do with the money in terms in terms of um, drilling. We've heard some horror stories in terms of uh, costs. Uh, rising for uh, drill bits. We've, we've heard um, horror stories with regards to how long assays take to come back. Um, and this is an Aussie company. It certainly was much more of an, it's listed in Australia, but it was an Aussie team, predominantly led by Ian. Your local guy, um, has, has the way that you're coming about this changed in, the sense for, in terms of the drill program, the drill planning uh, and the, or the modeling? Yeah, I mean, we, we were talking earlier about the foundation. Well, one of the solid foundations we've got here is our approach to exploration. Uh, it's very different to how others have explored Newfoundland. It's it's different to how others have explored Canada. It's a bit of a hybrid approach, uh, taking a Canadian approach and an Australian approach and meshing it together. Uh, there is the easy stuff is anything that's outcropping. And, and a lot of what's discovered already on the island is, is what's outcropped. Even the resource we have um, at Central Window Glass Hill are, are around outcrops that um, that I guess would be characterized as the easy stuff. So sampling through till cover is is um, hasn't really been done at all in Newfoundland, and that's something that we've been doing, and the company has been doing well before I joined. So that that will continue, and um, one of the things that that we're looking at right now is is just again moving beyond the known resource and going to Malachi, going to other areas. Uh, if there is any outcropping, obviously doing the, the the rock chipping, we've been doing bottom of hole sampling at Malachi. So we'll continue doing these things, but the, the objective really for us is to get out there to these new areas that have never seen a drill hole and do some diamond drilling. Yeah, it's, 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 that's the kind of Aussie skill set. That's a sort of very normal Aussie thing to do in terms of that. Um, yeah, that's right. You know, that's yeah, right. so it, it, I'm, I'm fascinated. We talked about that in February. We'll put a link below to this article, uh, to this interview with the February interview where we did a technical analysis and due diligence with your team then. I, I, we, we walked away thinking this is pretty, this could be pretty interesting, bringing those skill sets um, to, to bear here. But look, I want to go, go back to this kind of like the, 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 these, the two types of approaches that you can have, the kind of marathon approach and the new fan gold approach, you know, um, Newfound Gold is famous for these very high grade veins over, you know, short intervals, hot, you know, it's a, it's a difficult task to go and sort of track and, and follow, follow that, that, that vein, but the, my goodness, the grades are exciting versus marathon where there's kind of bulk tonnage kind of a, a, approach to the way that they're put together their resource. So if you got a preference yourselves, or do you think you can work both? methodologies uh, at the same time or would just capital dictate you got to pick something yeah i mean we um i guess the way to look at us the the analogy for us is marathon gold i mean our approach will be similar to marathon gold uh, what we believe we have is similar to marathon gold and so that's what we're look, looking to do we're looking to replicate marathon gold and, and what they have at valentine lake uh, so that's that's really what our focus is uh, we're not sure what newfound gold has obviously some big splashy drill intercepts um, prospective land, but they've got a lot of work to do in terms of uh, expanding their footprint. Um, so we'll we'll take an approach that's similar to what Marathon Gold has has taken. Uh, the other analogy for Australian shareholders is uh, Gold Road. Um, we've got Ian Murray and Justin Osborne, two two people who are instrumental in terms of the um, in terms of how Gold Road uh, shaped up and how that evolved from what was a story of drilling around a known resource uh, to one where they took us took a step back, looked at the tenement package they had, said, we need to uh, look green fields. We need to look for, you know, multi-million ounce deposit. And they decided to pivot their strategy away from that brownfields and did some work in terms of where they wanted to drill. They got lucky in that the first target they drilled was Gruyere, which ended up being the company maker for Gold Road. So in some ways, you know, we are analogous to Marathon Gold, but I'd also say from an Australian context perspective, uh, for those who are familiar with Gold Road, uh, this to me feels a lot like Gold Road 2.0. Right, right, interesting. And in terms of the 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 drilling, I mean, just again, it gives in in a, a quantify in the way that people don't understand either by meters or by dollars uh, in terms of these targets that you're you're now going after. Um, can you kind of break that down for us? Yeah. So for me, it's you know a KPI isn't the number of meters you drill. 
I want to ensure that what we drill is the right thing that we're drilling and it's yielding the right return. I've always been return focused, um, was pretty fairly dogmatic about that while I was with Oceana Gold. And uh, certainly um, we'll, we'll take that discipline to, to Mat uh, Matador. Have already been um, encouraging the team of geologists, which again are, are some of the best I've ever worked with, to really focus on, on return on investment. So we're going to do things in the right way. We're going to go through the, the, the methodology that they've adopted, uh, striking a balance between the commercial needs and, and the scientific needs. Uh, what, what you're going to learn more from is from diamond drilling. And the plan is with the funds that we have, and we're working up and finalizing those plans, is to uh, have a three to 5,000 meter drill program starting late summer, Canadian summer. Right, okay, so if you're outcomes focused, then what should we be looking or expecting from you in terms of defining what success looks like? Yeah, it's tagging into a new deposit. It's tagging into a, a big deposit. One of the things that I wanted to understand from the team on the ground is how they saw success to them. What was what was success in their eyes and how do they measure it? And and what I've learned is as, as great of geologists they are, uh, they were focused on KOZ. My objective here and the discipline that I'm looking to uh, instill at Matador is that success is measured with MOZ. So that's what we're looking for. That's what we're here. And that's what investors are, are backstopping us for is to discover MOZ, is to build millions of ounces of, of gold and, and mineral resource that will one day be a mine. And, and that's, that's how I measure success. That's what my expectations are. Uh, there's no guarantee, obviously, in the world of junior exploration that you're going to discover that. But we are well situated on a multi-million ounce gold structure to to be able to uh, make those discoveries. Right. Okay. And and like I say, I say again, the 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 money side of things is really important. You've you've come from the financial side of things. Is that really your remit, or will you be trying to instill more of this culture that perhaps you've seen from either the financial markets in terms of what what you need to be able to say to the financial markets or what you learned at Oceano during your time there? I mean, so what, what, what more is to come from you get, uh, apart from this pivot? Is there, is there going to be constant reviews and changes to strategy? I wouldn't say there's constant changes to strategy. Um, I've already articulated to um, to our shareholders who, who I've had an opportunity to, to meet with in Australia, uh, also in Canada, as part of the equity raise we just completed. Uh, we did pick up two very large resource specific funds based here in Toronto. Um, and and we've, we've had one of our large investors step up to become our largest shareholder, uh, who's also North American based. So again, part of the, what I mentioned, we have a good foundation. We had a great foundation of shareholders as well. And I've been very clear to them that I've, I'm pivoting the strategy, moving away from what I call brownfields to greenfields to look for multi-million ounce deposits. Uh, we're an ASX issuer with a presence in Australia, the assets in Newfoundland. And when you look at the map of the world and you look at Newfoundland, you think, where's the furthest place away from, from Newfoundland? You end up in Perth, Australia. So part of the reason the board was looking for a Toronto-based CEO is someone who's close to the project. Uh, but there's an opportunity here to to make this company a Canadian company as well. Uh, have a dual listing. So one of one of my strategic initiatives is really looking at um, the best way to get a TSX listing to complement the ASX listing, and be able to tap into uh, a large network here in North America, and I'd say even Europe that doesn't really know Matador. And I think that's also a near-term opportunity is to get the name out in a broad way really tapping into my network of buy side and sell side, uh, because this is a story that um, that people should know. This is a company that people should own. And we're in a jurisdiction that that is highly coveted. So this is the opportunity that that exists for both Australian shareholders, but also the North American ones who are interested in getting more Newfoundland exposure. Okay, because you, you're already on the OTC Q, QX, aren't you? Is, I mean, does that constitute a, a big part of your liquidity or or is it not working for you? Yeah, it surprisingly has pretty decent uh, liquidity. Yeah, uh, It looks like around 20% of our trading volumes okay. are on the OTC QX. So it does seem to work. Uh, sometimes it, it often doesn't work, but it, it's working for us. Um, I do have a network of um, high net worth investors in the United States. Uh, this gives them an avenue in which they can buy the shares. Uh, it's difficult for them to buy ASX stock, uh, a little easier for them to buy TSX stock, uh, but the OTCQX certainly provides them uh, a vehicle or an avenue in which they can own the shares. So I haven't yet 
gone into that network, uh, but my plan is to uh, to start tapping into the retail network that, that I have uh, relationships with throughout the United States. Okay, so this is a bit that interests me because um, right now, okay, everyone's off, right? I'm not going to have a go at anyone about their shares right at the moment. It's, it's risk off, cash in hand, but you know that, that that's the reality at the moment. And when but when it comes back, the companies that have got a kind of good corporate structure and um, good management teams with a good asset, doing things the right way, with, with a clear plan, where someone can enunciate, uh, uh, cl- clearly uh, communicate, is going to be important. Um, but so is the cash component. So you, you kind of it, feel, it kind of feels like you've kind of co- had to react quite quickly, cobble together the money that you needed, and it's coming in a, in a bunch of different forms at the moment. But looking forward, this market reach that you have, connections that you have, North America or otherwise. What do you need your team to deliver for you to go and have an intelligent, meaningful conversation with whatever money you're talking to? What, what does the company, new pivoted company need to look like and be able to say? Yeah, the company needs to continue down the path that it's going, going down in terms of making uh, the right choices, focused on the right metrics, the return on investment, and, and looking at it in terms of discovering new multi-million ounce gold deposits. It does take time and shareholders who are in the resource space, who are invested in junior exploration, do recognize that you're going to have success, but you're also going to have uh, quite a bit of failure. And it's really understanding what's the, you know, what's, if you look at it as from a binary scale, are you closer to zero or are you closer to one? And it's my job then uh, to allow, to enable the geologists to do the work that they need to do. Um, with the right guidance to, to focus on not just on the science, but also on the commercial implications of what they're doing. And then, and then look at, uh, and then be able to articulate that story to investors to, to see or to allow them to gauge whether this is closer to one or is this closer to zero? And, you know, it could be zero, but, um, I believe, you know, prior to joining Matador and I felt that we were closer to one. Now that I'm three months into the company, I believe we're even closer to one. Than I did before, and that's my job then to go and, and really articulate the strategy, engage with investors, keep them informed with what we're doing, keep them apprised on how how um, uh, how successful or not we are with the program. If we're not successful, we've got so much ground here for us to to go and explore on. So if Malachite does not end up being what we believe it might be, then we've got Hermitage, we've got other targets called Bunker Hill and Grandies. There's no shortage of targets, but we have to be smart about it because we know what's going on in the market. We know there's a scarcity of capital. So we're gonna be very smart, but we're also gonna think big because that's important. If you think big and you think bold, but you do things in a smart way, I believe that's a recipe for success. And that's that's sort of the model that I've had throughout my career. It's interesting, I, there's a CEO that I uh, interview, and I think he, he uses his phrase very clearly with me. He, he doesn't have geologists, he has uh, economic geologists. Which you know, all, all, all is kind of joking, joking apart. It's kind of helping everyone on the team understand the commercial imperative and commercial realities of of running a business. You know, need to focus on not necessarily the the right thing according to the science. Or it's sometimes you got to get that balance between giving the market what it wants and doing the science too, um, without stepping over into that over promotional. Um, sometimes you know. Uh, space that some companies do. So uh, no, I, I appreciate that. So like, like given this first time we've, we've spoken, you're, you know, new, new CEO on the block, as it were, um, I'll give you two minutes to um, sell this to anyone listening or, or watching this. Why should they buy? Why you? Yeah, so it's a great question. And why Matador is because we are in a top tier jurisdiction. Again, the final frontier, uh, not just the new frontier, but a final frontier for top tier jurisdiction for mining. We're sitting on 120 kilometers of continuous strike on the largest gold structure that's already hosting 5.1 million ounces with Marathon Gold, hosting our 837,000 ounces and growing resource uh, at Matador. We, we're in base, we're in elephant country. We're looking for elephants. We're in a new area that is larger than Valentine Lake that through the work that we've done is oozing gold. We're doing follow up work so that we can go and diamond drill in that location. We've got plenty of targets. As I've mentioned before, 90% of this area, uh, the 120 kilometers of strike, have never seen a drill hole before. That's the opportunity for us to go and make multi-million ounce discoveries. That's on the Cape Ratio. 
In addition to that, we've got the Hermitage Project, which is on the Hermitage Flexure. It's the largest arsenic antimony anomaly on the island, second largest being newfound gold. So it certainly has the right geochemical signatures, uh, but also never seen any drill hole. So that's another uh, main target area that we're looking for. From a corporate perspective, it's a strategy focused on unlocking shareholder value, looking to complement the ASX listing with the TSX listing. With what's happening in the broader market, uh, the level of activity in Newfoundland having sort of subsided, as you pointed out, that in itself presents an opportunity to really consolidate opportunities on the island. And that's something that I'm going to be looking for, just given my commercial M&A background, is looking to, to do smart consolidation. Too many companies in the island. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to um, to really cobble together good land and, and uh, align ourselves with uh, with other opportunities.